Hey guys, today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to create a new settlement. Um, this is my way. I think there are probably other ways to do it. I don't know. Have a look. This is the way I determine that it works. So, just uh, we're just going to be working on a Fallout 4 vanilla location. So just go ahead and load up your master file, Fallout4.exe. And while this loads, uh, let's talk about whatever. So I like to go to fallout4map.com, brings you up here, I hit hide all, open up locations. The one in particular that I want to work on is the Adam Cat's Garage. Um, there is um, no settlement here from another mod, I looked up, even settle mods doesn't have it. I thought there would have been a settlement here, but there is not, in terms of mod, modding I mean. So this is where we're going to go. Um, yeah, so let's let that open. It's good to look at, um, locations around. There's not a whole lot. I mean, there's a settlement here, a settlement here, a settlement here, a settlement here. But it's, it's an alright location, I guess. But I can see why people want to, you know, they'd want to build here. So we're going to work on that. Let this keep on loading however long it takes. Uh, it's done now. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go to Cellview, Commonwealth. We're going to hop right on over there. Uh, let that queue up. So let's go right click, render window properties. I want to have this unchecked. I'm going to have grid set to. I suppose 5 is fine. I want it to be quick, so I'll just change it to 4 real quick. Um. Adam Katz Garage. See, there's three cells with the name. You want to have that information in mind. So double click it, let it load up. I imagine this is probably going to be a long video. Not entirely sure. So here we are. Uh, we got some floating stuff. So let's double click. We see this is under the FX layer. Which is probably under Clifton. No, it's under. Here it is. Uh, that just removes a lot of sh uh, a lot of stuff, so it makes it easier to work around. So we have our location. We're looking around. There's water on three sides. You know, press B to open up your cell view. Uh, we have this cell here, which is Adam Cat's Garage EXT. EXT02, and I know there's a third one. It's not this one not over here. XT01. Oh, okay. So the EXT, EXT01, and EXT02. Alright. <clears throat> so, this is where things get tricky. I know from the game that there is a quest or two or whatever that takes place here. That means it uses the. Um, I'm talking about uh, the um, location form for quests. So let's look. What if I just type an Adam Cat? Will that work? Cats. Fine. There we go. Yeah. Here's the garage location. Right click use info. It is used by a lot of stuff actually. These cells. That's good. We don't have to make any adjustments to the cells. Um. DNL you know, 54, Adam Cat's Garage. That's a quest. So is this, but this is a random encounter quest. We don't have to worry about it. DNL you know, 54. I want to know what that is. That's probably Adam Cat's Garage. That's the quest. And if we go to Alii, it is uh, the location right here, Forest. Typically, when you do a settlement location uh, mod, you can break quests like that. So, I'm doing this location either way. Uh, my last one, Roadside Pines Motel, doesn't have any quests that take place there, so nothing was broken. Um, whereas Thicket Excavations has a quest there, so it's broken. So basically, the user needs to install your mod after having done the quests associated with the location. So that's a rundown on the location, so we can close the use report. 
So we have here auto refs. Let's open that up. Let's go to the encounter zone. So this is cool. It has never resets, already checked. So that's good. Now we're going to select workshop and hit OK. The rest is fine. Over here, we're going to add new. Um, yeah. Or not new. We're going to add. Just type in work. Uh, yeah, work. Let's just type in work. We're going to add lock type workshop. We're going to add lock type workshop settlement. And just to be sure, lock type settlement. Yeah. I want to add those in there. Uh, clearable, we can keep that. MS11 lock type turbo pump. MS11. It's a side quest. Turbo pump. What? What is that? USS Constitution. Uh, turbo pump. Turbo pump. This is all stuff you have to look into as you're working on your mod. Make sure you don't break things unnecessarily. Um, let's go MS11 Loctite. Turbo pump. Use info. So it looks like there are many other location forms with this tag on it, which is good, so we don't have to worry about it. We can actually just totally remove it. Okay. The rest looks fine. I'm going to hit OK on that. Let's, uh, let's hit Save. We're going to name our mod. I'm going to name it Adam Cat's uh, cart. <laughs> Adam Cat Settlement. ESP. Ugh. If that pops up, then that means you have Team Viewer open. Close that. Adam Cat's Settlement. Alright, and it will have saved. So, we gotta work on a few things here. Let's drop in our workshop. Or our workbench. So just type in work bench. That's going to be right here under the containers tab. So I always do the sort by name first and then sort by form type. That way it's by form type and in order of alphabetical order within the form type. And uh, we're going with the first one. But first, let's find a place to put it. I'm thinking in the red rocket. That, just feels like it makes sense, you know? Maybe we should put it right along here. I'm not sure. Let's look around a little bit more. We can put it back around here. Um, I feel like it has to be around these two buildings. Just, just put it in a nice place. I'm just going to put it here. And uh, align it very nicely. That was pretty good. Now hit Control E. We're going to check the nav mesh. Uh, notice we have nav mesh that would over that would be in the way of the uh, workbench. So we select these like so. Just move it out of the way so nobody tries to walk through the workbench. No one's that's pointless. All right, let's hit save again. So we have a workbench, and that's about it. Let's go over to Adam oh my God, Adam Katz again. Let's check out the location reference types. <clears throat> so it has a map marker reference type. And that's it. It doesn't have a cell location or anything. So we have to manually make this stuff. Let's go ahead and close this. Type in X marker heading. I'm just going to type X and marker H. Press M to allow view of all this garbage. Grid zone, package, sandbox. Oh man, this is going to be a huge pain in the ass. Of course it is. <laughs> I think I dropped it right here. This is it? Yeah, this is the one we put down. I'm going to remove it. I want to put it somewhere out of the way and away from stuff. X marker heading. Um, point it towards the workbench. Doesn't really matter. 
uh, but we're going to go into it, double click it, scroll on over through these tabs to location ref type, click new, type in center, location center marker, hit OK. A purple thing will appear above it to let you know easily which one is the center type. Pretty good stuff. Hop on over here, we can add more X markers. Um, looks like I didn't open up, well, let's click in here and type F5 and it'll reload the area, giving me a true view of the edge. I like to put a, a marker edge on each edge <laughs> of the settlement. Point it inwards. Add in our edge. Just type an edge. Location edge marker. Let's get copy on there. Let's add another one over here. Probably like right here. Paste. Take that around. It's within the cell. Let's move it in a little bit just in case. <clears throat> over here, we got more. Paste that right on in there. And I'm thinking right here. Well, this actually is a huge area of space that the player can build on, so let's move it out here. But first, <clears throat> we're in a wilderness cell, which means it's a cell that isn't named. So let's go world cells <clears throat> for seven negative eight. Or I mean, 18. Um, it doesn't have a location type on there. So we're going to have to add that. Adam Cat's garage location. The reason why you want to add this to the location is primarily so um, uh, Sim Settlements will function properly within the new build area. So hit OK. So we've added this cell on here, this entire piece, but we're not going to really use the entire piece. We're just going to add in our thing here. And uh, let's hit save. So we have our edge markers, four of them. To make sure, let's type in Adam Cats. Open location, and in here we'll have new. We have three edge markers. Three of them. I had four, right? Is that one not in the cell? It looks like it is. So let's find out which one is not open. So just double click, it'll automatically go over to it. So that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. It looks like this one over here is not in the cell. Let's go ahead and move it. Just to yes. Just because I really don't want to add additional cells, especially since this cell has a name, I don't want to modify it. Alright, so hit save. And sort. We have four edge markers and one center markers. Perfect. Basically, now. I want to add another X marker coming from a row. This is going to be our spawn marker. See right here. A little farther down. Since I'm noticing I'm having problems with the loaded area, I'm going to increase it to five. I thought Adam Cats would be smaller than that, but whatever. Not really a big deal. <coughs> Loading, loading, loading. Okay, so we have everything in view, looking good. Um. Okay, sure, yeah. Let's hit save. So I'm gonna put another X marker right here, heading. 
grab the workbench reference window over here. Go over to the spawn marker. Uh, let's go to linked reference. Select new. Double click that. Click in the workshop. Uh, we're going to go link spawn. Hit OK. Keep this window open. I'm not done with it. We now need to go to our center marker, which is the pink one right here. Workshop. Link center. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't mean to hit OK. I wasn't finished. Um, but I'm also going to open up our workshop container. Go to container again. Workshop resource container. Is that it? I don't remember. Uh, settlement. Yes, this one here. Typically, just put this underneath the ground. Don't click that. Oops. And double click, select workshop link container. All right, so so far we have added our locations, made a bunch of changes to that. So obviously, when we get into the official, um, Uh, when we release the mod, we want to tell people, hey, you need to have done the quest here first. Otherwise, you could, they could risk breaking it and not be able to do the quest at all. Kind of just how it is, unfortunately. Next, what we're going to do is our visual border. The visual border isn't the actual border. It's just a visual representation for the player to see where the border is. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. Uh, we have workshop already typed in. Sort, just in case we go down to statics. Workshop borders are right here. Um, yeah, these 30. For such a flat land, I typically go with Spectacle Island. So drag and drop that in here. You won't see it pop up because this particular one is gigantic. You can see it going out over there. Right, so for this, make sure you don't have either of these toggles open. Sorry about the plane overhead. I'll bring it up. I'll zoom out a bit. Let's rotate it. And we're going to adjust the size of it <coughs> by making sure it's selected holding down S on the keyboard and drag the drag it while it's selected. You see the difference? Not selected, selected. Left click, drag, and resize it. It is a scale size. It does, you can't just transform it like you would in Photoshop, for example. Bring it down to the ground. See what kind of size we're working with. See our edge markers over there, so we can make it a little bit bigger. That's a pretty good size. I think a little bit smaller doesn't need to be so gigantic. I'll make sure it's totally viewable. Rotate it a bit, make sure it's visible above the road over here. And that settlement size looks pretty good. It's pretty big for a settlement, but it's perfectly fine since this area is not dense really. So nothing to worry about. Just want to make sure it looks good. So notice how it's really sticking up off the ground over here. Drop it a bit. So I'm just making adjustments. Uh, 
That looks pretty good. I like it. So uh, let's double click it. Set initially disabled. Um, let's go find our workbench. Let's select uh, linked reference, the workbench. Type in workshop uh, and then buildable area. It's probably linked border. Build area edge. There it is. And okay. And that's pretty much all you need from that piece right there. And uh, hit save. Now, what I want to show you over here, you see I have this all this land, but it's not necessarily flat. We can indeed flatten this. Um, for the final product, I won't have it flattened, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll show you how to deal with it. So, um, while your render uh, window is open or selected, press H. This brings up the landscape edit settings. We're going to set an edit radius of 2 and click flatten vertices. Basically, this is what we're going to do is select a level and just straight up flatten it by dragging out. Be careful not to get over to areas that you don't actually need flattened. Just hold and click. Be careful with it. You can easily lose control. Um, and now it's flattened. They need to hit save and close this. Um, what I'm about to do risks crashing the creation kit. <laughs> And that is hitting Control Z while this window is open, um, or while it's after having edited landscape. It's something that can just happen. It's really annoying, but um, I always try not to do that. But I uh, have to anyways to undo damage to the terrain I just did for the tutorial. Whew. Keep going. Control Y, bring back this. All right, now I'm back to where um, it was before. But that's how you edit terrain and just make it straight up flat, perfectly flat, in any particular level. See, if I, I had it clicked here, so it's choosing this as the level. If I clicked it down here, then it would have lowered all this to make it flat with this. It's all about reference, is how it uh, decides where to make stuff flat. <clears throat> Alright, so that is done now. We have our stuff linked. Let's uh, hit save anyway. We have our buildable areas, we have all that. Now let's work on our actual build area that the workbench will be using to tell. Uh, when to tell the player to get out of the whatever <laughs> or how it knows that the player is no longer in the settlement area so what we're going to do is click T right here the T box just click it and then click anywhere it'll ask for a form type in dumb and we can just select default dummy we get this nice little cube here it'll have this jacks of axis uh, controls. Uh, you can just drag them. It's really handy. What we're going to do now is drag it out to our build area partially. Go make sure you're nice and down. Make sure it gets way up top. I think that right there is a pretty good height for building. Make sure it aligns with the actual visual border. Um, I turn light and off, or light on and off, to depending on how I want to view it. Uh, by having it off, you can see the trigger a bit better. So I'm gonna drag it over there. 
notice that it isn't actually perfectly aligned, so let's rotate it to match border. Pretty good. That looks nice. Um, I'm going to double click this, go over to primitive, and change the color of it to purple. I like the purple, that just tells me what it is. Uh, orange for me is typically sandbox, so I don't want to get confused. I want it to be purpley, blue, violet color of some kind, just so I know what I'm working with. So I'm going to drag this over here to the corner right there. Uh, notice how it has a cut right here. We want to have the build area border view of pretty accurate. You could just drag it over and say you don't care. But for this we're gonna I'm gonna be making it accurate. Let's drag it over. We're gonna drag it to the this edge over here. Basically I align it with the bottom of the blue line. It's a side piece. And drag it over there and make sure see if it matches over here. It does not at all. And that's fine. And I'm going to select it and hit Control D to duplicate it. I have another piece. I'm going to align it with this corner piece. Make it smaller. Make sure these overlap so that the player isn't walking and suddenly gets kicked out of build mode or get the timer that it's going to pop up. That's pretty good. Um, just control D. I'm going to select the 45 degree angle uh, lock. Move it over to this piece. Drag it over to meet this corner edge. Now we have to work with these corners, so duplicate, uh, rotate, make it smaller. Basically we just need to make this, this corner meet with that corner and that's going to just be perfectly accurate. So I'm going to drag one corner over, bring this to that. Notice how this isn't matching up, so we're going to disable this, fine tune it by using the side button or the, the back button on your mouse if you have one. If not, you'll have to do this the hard way. It's only slightly hard, it's not really a big deal. Um, and that looks pretty good to me. Now we're gonna duplicate it and not drag it across over there. Oh my god. Ah, okay. Move it over, rotate it. Oh, it's obnoxious. And booyah. It's pretty close. Let's bring it out a little bit. Okay. And notice how they're all overlapping. Let's hit save at this point so we just don't lose our prog progress. Um, let's take this piece and duplicate it as we are going over to this corner over here. Line. It's really faint. I can see it on my screen. You probably can't see it. But uh, there's the line. Drag it over to the new corner, rotate, make sure it makes sense. The reason why we're duplicating is so that uh, everything has the same height all the way across. You know, so it's all one flat edge. All right, and that looks pretty good. Let's duplicate it. Make it smaller. Rotate it for this corner that goes from right here over to here. Let's 
looks pretty good. Duplicate that again. Rotate. Next corner piece over to Um, it's a little short. Notice how there's pretty good space, but it's perfect over here. So we just got to rotate it a little bit and bring it on down. Rotate a little bit more, bring it on down. Okay. And for the final piece, And that's what it's like creating the buildable area for the Starlight, or not Starlight, for uh, Spectacle Island's build area. It's got all those corners. Um, I recommend if you just want a straight up square, you just use um, over, uh, Overland. It's just pretty much a square. Um, green Top Nursery might be a square. I don't entirely remember. But uh, there it is. So let's count our. Um, Buildable areas because we have to link them to the box and we want, we want to make sure we have them all. So we have one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it looks like. So one, two, I'm going to hold control and select them all, but not dragging because you don't want to drag all this stuff over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. Let's zoom on in straight into our. To where our workbench is and I'm going to show you a really handy tool to have you could go down over here to view reference batch action, batch action window as we have all our stuff selected select reference and window render window and that's going to be our workshop workbench now we're going to hit set linked reference and for a keyword uh, we're going to be using uh, workshop. I'm trying to remember. It's a primitive. Linked primitive. Workshop linked primitive. Hit do. And it's going to make all nine of them just automatically connect. Nice and easy. You can see the white lines going out across, reaching to their origins. That looks pretty good. Um, I want to make sure that for underwater purposes, the. Uh, Buildable area is fully underground, underwater, so the player doesn't get kicked out of the build area if they go down too low to the water. Just a thought to keep in mind. <coughs> Let's finally hit save. Now what I'm going to do is select this big one, duplicate it, make it a little bit taller, drag it across so it encompasses the entire. Uh, buildable area. Stretch it out. And over here a little bit. Over here as well. I'm going to duplicate, or not duplicate, double click it, select, make it orange because this is our um, sandbox area. So for this, we're going to Go down to the workshop. What, wait, what is this? What am I selected? Oh, that's odd. I guess I moved it on accident. Move that back over there. Uh, to hide this, hit 2 on the keyboard. Double click this, bring it over here so it doesn't get hidden. Zoom all the way out. Link reference new. Select our default dummy. Uh, workshop link sandbox. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, and hit save. All right, so we need to do next. Let's go over to this workbench right here. 
Type in set owned into the object window. Drag and drop this right here. You can consume the bench and stick out a bit. Press 2 to further adjust it a bit. All right, so double click it, uh, link reference, new, select the workbench, hit OK, OK, and drag it right on over. This way, um, <clears throat> it works as a failsafe. Naturally, the player should just have a settlement available to them. Um, if not, then when they walk up to it, they'll hit this trigger, and it's going to really force it to go through. Notice the uh, <laughs> brush going through it. So let's open up here. Um, I recognize the textures. So uh, this one in right here is uh, dirt gravel. Just gonna tap it in there, make a little bit of an adjustment, make sure it can't possibly have anything pop through. Just for, uh, you know, cosmetic stuff. I'm going to go ahead and close that and hit save. <coughs> Alright, so next what we want to work on. We've done a lot, but we need to add attack markers. This uh, works off the object center cell, or whatever. Basically what I'm going to do is create more X markers, where they would make sense of course. I just found one and duplicated it. Um, so let's add it over here. Add it over there actually. Duplicate, add another. I'm gonna keep it like kind of behind stuff. And let's select them. Hop on over to the cell icon. Some kind of floating box right here, I'm gonna check out in a second. And um, for this one, I'm trying to remember, it might be attack. No. Attack, boom, boom, go to the keywords. Attack type, workshop, link, attack marker. All right, so workshop. All right, now we have this box floating right here. Let's double click it. It's a radio transmitter. That's normal. We're good. All right, so we pretty much have the settlement aspect done. We have the, basically the player can build here. What the player can't do is this probably anything else. Settle just won't show up or anything. Not yet. First, I want to double check some stuff. Let's go do, double click that. Scroll all the way over to scripts. Double click the scripts. Let's check out this stuff. Um, looks fine. Owned by player. Let's set that as owned by player. Not hostile. Automatic player ownership. Um, make that false. Okay, okay. Save. Always save all the time. Alright. So that's pretty good. Next, what we're going to do is add the items to be scrappable for our settlement here. 
Seems like there's a lot actually, but uh, let's just get on into it. Uh, what we're gonna do is first, it's good to have knowledge of what actually is scrappable. Example: This is scrappable. Scrappable. Fence is scrappable. That's scrappable. This is not scrappable, so we'll ignore that. Basically, all you want to do is click and drag. Select a bunch of stuff. Deselect the objects that are we don't need to have uh, scrappable. Bushes. Um, again, these. I know that's not scrappable. Move that car up. That's not scrappable. And I mean vanilla scrappable, not um, mods, really. This is not entirely important. I have no idea what is selected over here, but there's something. There's something. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. Again, over here, I'm just going to manually select some stuff because there's just a lot to grab otherwise. Let's check out the inside of here. These are all scrappable. This has a terminal on it. Terminals aren't scrappable, so we're not going to have these crates be scrappable. You just gotta like think about this stuff as you're going. These are scrappable. Uh, the bed, yeah, we'll have that selected as well. Let's take a look at this. Buses are not scrappable. Boom, boom. Make sure you're holding control, otherwise you'll lose all the stuff you grabbed. Boom, 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 boom. Um, I just want to grab this whole area at once. So it looks like there's a bunch of stuff on here that is not going to be scrappable while the truck is scrappable. So let's not even worry with that in all honesty. Uh, let's grab this over here. Notice there are objects. These are indeed scrappable. Boom, boom. Okay, looks pretty good. Next up is the fence. No, that's scrappable. Tires, tires. All right, that seems like a good amount at first to grab. So let's go head back over to our workbench. Make sure not to deselect all that you worked on. Reference back to action window. Um, double click to assign to here. Um, so this is a fair amount of objects to have. You can have the bar as like as small as like this. You don't want to have too much going on or it can crash the creation kit. So um, set linked reference, workshop, item keyword, and hit do. It can take a second sometimes. Um, and then now we have all those objects added to be scrappable. Sorry about the annoying dog. Uh, neighbor dog. Uh, let's see here. So now we're going to continue scrapping. Notice how if I select something over here, all the lines show up. So we can tell if we've already got something added as a linked reference. Yep, grab those already. Um, so let's go ahead and grab all this over here. Normally you would just highlight uh, like a whole bunch of stuff at once, but there's a lot going on here and I don't want to accidentally grab stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be added. That, for example. I don't even know if this stuff is scrappable. Pretty standard. Continue the fence. Signs are scrappable. Cinder blocks are scrappable. 
Uh, sidewalk is not. It's looking pretty good. Um, boom. I stopped selecting stuff right up to here, maybe? No. Here. You want to be careful not to double click anything. If you do that, you'll lose all your selected items. For some reason, these barrels are halfway in the ground, but whatever. <laughs> Notice I'm only working on the outside. I'm not really doing stuff on the inside of buildings, really. Not yet. So that encompasses most of the inner stuff outside of buildings. Let's add this onto the uh, workbench. Uh, set link will already be set, so I'll just set item keyword. Hit do. Billboards are not scrappable, so we'll leave that as is. You don't want to remove telephone poles because the spoons will be floating here. That's kind of an annoyance. Um, so let's grab onto these trees. Let's do a outer edge kind of run here. Just select a bunch of stuff. Fortunately, I'm selecting the waves. There we go. Um, you can't see it because of the LOD that's on, but there are waves here that go, you know, because they go up shore. Uh, those can be a really obnoxious to try to select objects because they have a really big hitbox. See, I can't even select this piece of wood, so I'm just going to not bother with it at all. Um, but alternatively, we can just go like this. Now, I got it, but I also have extra items. <laughs> Select all that. Does it look normal? So here it is. Here's an example of what it looks like. So notice there's nothing to select over here besides that. Got something down there. Is that that scrap metal stuff? No, that's something else entirely. It's not doable. These are not scrappable, so we'll just ignore that. Ah, well, that is. There we go. Um, pretty sure that's scrappable. Boats are not scrappable. We got some stuff in here. That's pretty good. The build area. Don't get the rocks at all. Just notice some stuff floating around. Alright, go ahead and grab these, not the rocks, doesn't particularly matter that much. And all kinds of stuff. I 
There's just nothing over here in these corners. Got a tree branches, a pallet, car. <laughs> Stump. Go ahead and select the trees. Those are good. Da -da 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 -da. So it looks pretty complete. Look here. Okay, yeah, this is pretty much done. Um, let's take a look at this boat. Hmm, nothing in here. Just taking a good look around. Okay, cool. So that should pretty much conclude the outer, sorry, the outside areas. Now we're going to go look at the inside stuff once we apply this. So notice how small the bar is? That's a pretty good amount. Got a lot of objects selected here and it needs to add a link reference to each and every one of them. So our workshop item keyword. Do. Might take a second. And done. And I'm going to hit save. So I don't have to do that again. Uh, let's check out the inside of Red Rocket, see what we can add. Now we have these power armor frames, or armor rack things, whatever. These follow the same keyword. Uh, that's scrappable, scrappable. Yes, I think so. I'm not entirely sure. If it's not scrappable, then it won't matter if it's picked up or not. Boom, all that. Garbage. I honestly don't know about this stuff, but uh, no idea what that is. Boom, boom, boom. Rugs, you know, stuff that you can place. In general are scrappable. I'm not sure about that, but maybe. So we'll just do it anyway. Beds. Dresser room light. Bed. Light. I seem to be picking something up over here. There we go. Anyways. Bed curtain, I think is. Good source of cloth. This is considered trash, so I can't get rid of that. All right, so that pretty much everything. Let's see here, yep, there we go. Checking the outer edges just in case. Anything up here? Nope. Um, Alright. Same old thing. Workshop. Item keyword. Do. Next up we have interior of this building and wow there's a lot to work with here <laughs> not sure about pool table but whatever Sure about this.
All right. That's pretty good. Oh, let's grab this too, just in case. And add it to the workbench. Save. All right, so now the player can build stuff and scrap stuff. Click below to subscribe and click to your left to see more Fallout. Uh, yeah. There's other mods and shit. There's a Facebook too for Neher mods. Check out the description below, I, I guess. And, uh, yeah.